On November 3rd, Central Oregon Community College will be going to the voters in Central Oregon asking for a bond measure for additional construction on the college campus. This is Central Oregon Insights. I'm John McCauley. Today in the studio with us, we have Charlie Miller, a chair, the chairman of COCC Yes and a board member of Central Oregon Community College. Welcome to our studios. Thanks for joining us this morning. Thanks for having me, John. Uh, pleasure's all ours. So for starters, uh, they're, they have a board, they have a bond measure that's going to be coming up. What is this bond measure going to pay for? John, well, this bond measure will pay for a, a new health careers building and a science building in the at the Bend campus, a new technology education center at the Redmond campus, educational campus facilities in Madras and Prineville, and labs, learning space, clinics uh, for health career programs such as nursing, dental assisting, pharmacy technician, and medical assisting, and renovation of other buildings to address enrollment increases expand capacity and modernize facilities. Essentially, we're busting at the seams right now, John, and and COCC uh, uh, really in this down economy, uh, people are flocking to COCC as as you've talked about on the radio and you see in in the press. People are seeking uh, training, retraining, students out of high school seeking credits to transfer to a four-year institution, but uh, but we're busting at the seams. Enrollment's uh, up over 45% in the last two years, and and it's... uh, now, in a bad economy, that this could be a two-sided coin. Of course, you're going to have a spike in enrollment at the college with people wanting to retrain themselves to be able to get into more lucrative careers where they can support themselves, especially with all the layoffs and everything that are going on. But the other side of the coin is the fact that it is actually going to ask for some additional money from the people out here in the Central Oregon area. Could you tell me a little bit about how, what this bond measure is going to cost your average Central Oregonian? I mean, with the vast size of our district, Central Oregon Community College district is comprised of uh, Deschutes, Jefferson, all of Deschutes, Jefferson, and Crook County, part of Wasco County, and part of Lake and Klamath County. So the district is very vast, and and with the total amount of the bond at at forty one point five eight million, uh, with that vast of a district, that that amounts to to the average taxpayer in Deschutes County less than two dollars a month, about around twenty dollars a year, and uh, so less than two dollars a month uh, is really our slogan and that's the average taxpayer in average excuse me average homeowner in Deschutes County and uh, in Jefferson Crook and the other counties is actually less. And that's a point a important point of clarification there. This is actually going to be on the property taxes. So this is something that is not going to uh, how does this affect people that might not be property owners? Uh, well, if you're not a property owner, you don't pay tax. This is property tax uh, only. So so it's the average homeowner less than $2 a month. So we're looking at about twenty dollars a year. Now you had run through a list of different uh, different buildings that they're looking at bringing in. Let's talk about some of the specific areas. One area that I know there's a lot of interest in because it's one of the easiest uh, areas to find employment, and it's also one of the hardest things to get into in the school is the nursing program. Could you tell us a little bit about the new nursing building that they're planning on setting up? Well, I, uh, not too many specifics about the building itself, other than it's in design stage now, and and so we're hoping to get it uh, funded so we can build it. It, but uh, the nursing program, as you've heard, we have an award-winning nursing program and some of the highest test scores in the nation. Great graduates, and it's one of those fields, actually the medical fields in general. This is really a health uh, careers building, so it'll be nursing and uh, other programs. And, and as we the boomers get older, there's more and more f- opportunities. It's Healthcare in general is one of those fields that uh, there's actually a projected job growth and a shortage of people, which there, there are some fields that project grob, job growth, but there's but it's one of the golden fields out there for the future. And anyhow, so the new uh, uh, building will expand that program and allow more people to be trained in nursing as well as, well as other healthcare op- occupations. Certainly. Now, I had heard that there was uh, about 36 people per term that are allowed into the nursing program. Does that sound about right to you? Uh, that could be right, John. I'm not exactly sure that Exact okay. number. I know that there are definitely, this is one of the challenges for those who aren't familiar with, uh, with what goes on up at Central Oregon Community College. The nursing program, like he had said, is definitely one of the most popular ones up there. And there is a very limited number of spaces available. I know that a lot of people are on waiting lists. So they're really hoping to remedy one of those, you know, that's the real choke point right there is how many people can you get in the classes because the demand for people that want to go is there and the jobs are waiting on the other side. It's just a matter of being able to fill in that gap and have the appropriate structure 
professors and the teachers and everything like that, which actually leads me into my next point. There, now, a lot of people when they hear a bond measures coming out, they don't know exactly what it'll be spent for. Now, we've kind of brushed on the fact that this is going to cover a lot of construction. This is only for construction, correct? That's correct, John. Yes, it, it's just capital construction, brick and mortar, bricks and mortar. And I understand that there are some matching funds available that if this bond measure does pass are going to be available around $11 million. Am I correct on that? That's correct. John, at the last uh, the last bond measure that we attempted last November, we had $5.7 million in matching funds. And the CUCC staff has worked uh, extremely hard through the legislature this legislative session and has uh, managed to uh, acquire a, another match for the Redmond Technology Center, which actually the, the Redmond Technology Center was not on the first bond measure. So totaling $11.47 million in matching funds if we get the match. So the 40, uh, $41 million bond essentially will translate into about $53 million in, in construction. Now, you brought up the Redmond campus, and for those, again, who aren't very familiar with the college community here in Central Oregon, they do have a vibrant campus up in Redmond. And uh, could you tell me a little bit about the new building that, they, that they're looking at putting in up there? I understand that there's some fun, exciting stuff going on up there. Well, there's fun, exciting stuff going on in, in the Redmond campus uh, in general, and, and there's been a tremendous amount of growth in, in the Redmond campus. And But as far as the exact programs and so forth that will be offered in, in the building, uh, it, we're calling it a technology building and it will be, uh, it's, it's all about jobs. We're going to develop programs that will put people to work and likely possibly green technology, which there's a lot of uh, interest in that. And, and so the uh, the Redmond Technology Program will be extremely job focused and, and we're pretty excited about the opportunity. Certainly. Could you speak a little bit about the symbiotic relationship between the college providing jobs uh, or the college at the training people for jobs and then them all the existence of the college encouraging companies to come to uh, Redmond or Ben because they see that there will be trained people available for them. This kind of helps the economy on both sides by providing jobs, building it by training people in the in the building itself. And then the fact that it's there might cause more jobs to move in, if you could tell me a little bit more about that. Well, absolutely, John. I think uh, community colleges in general, uh, nationwide, are the most agile and quickest to respond to workforce needs, whether it's uh, you know, in the aircraft industry, a composites program, if there's job opportunities, we can develop a program, I think, quicker than any other. Uh, you know, we can develop train, a training program to suit certain industries uh, quicker than any other institution uh, or type of institution. And so I think uh, community colleges are all about, in, in this aspect, all about jobs and and. And our staff uh, does a tremendous job working with the business community, developing programs that are relevant to our community, to the communities that we serve. And what kind of response have you gotten from the businesses in the area that you've dealt with uh, in regards to this bond measure? They seem to be generally supportive, or you know, does, is it seen as something that you know is driving up driving up taxes? Or what's what have you been getting from the business owners in the area about how they hope this turns out? You know, John, surprisingly, surprisingly uh, you know, it, it is a tough time to ask businesses and owners, uh, property owners, to uh, pay additional tax. And, and it is a very small, uh, a relatively small amount. Uh, and the Ben Chamber, in fact, recently, just this week, uh, voted to endorse uh, this bond measure. I think they recognize that COCC is part of the solution. Uh, and you know, COCC's key role in uh, helping us uh, out of this uh, economic situation and training the workforce. And uh, so I think the business community has really uh, hopped on board and, and we're excited. Now, it's going to be important to change a few people's minds, being that a bond measure that was, for what I understand, for less money la la was shot down last year. What changes have been made or what what are you guys doing differently this time as opposed to last time? And why do you think this one might pass when the other one failed? John, I think, um, first of all, that this bond is actually for, this bond is actually for less money than the one that failed. So, so, uh, but last, last fall we attempted to pass a bond and it failed in actually a very close election in which I, uh, attribute, I think, to the noise from, from all of the uh, contentious issues that were on the ballots. Uh, the economy, which I think that has uh, changed quite a bit. I think people are realizing now the importance of the uh, community college to, again, as part of the solution. And the complex message we had, we had uh, all, as we've talked about, matching funds, and we had retired a library bond, which, uh, you know, and, and so there was, uh, we were probably trying to uh, 
uh, say too much. Uh, anyhow, since that time, uh, we've had the Go Oregon Stimulus Funds, which you've uh, heard about. COCC re- received some of the uh, uh, stimulus funds, $2.8 million from the state to do some renovations, which have come off the bond. Uh, we received these additional state matching funds uh, for the new Redmond Technology Center. And, and the entire bond itself has been uh, refabricated or, or reworked, I think I would be a better word, to, to become more job focused. And so uh, essentially this is a better bond for less money. It's actually over $2 million less. And uh, with the addition of the Redmond Technology Center and the additional matching funds, funds from the state, it's become a, a uh, even better bond, even so, better package, I guess, for the communities we serve. 